Okay, so this is a new series. It's called, What is Really Going On? The News Behind the News. So, first of all, we have to understand that this world is a miracle. I was thinking about this today. Excuse me. Chaim. Our bodies are epic miracles. <laughs> Look at the skin. It's the largest organ. It allows in, I don't want to say wrong things, but I think allows in air, but it it's waterproof. It's moist. It's supple. Your eyes are an epic miracle. Um, you know, if anybody knows anything about the eyes, how they work, it's just beyond imagination there's three million cones three million cones in your eyes and they take in like light and they translate it basically into like electrical signals so it, it's much more sophisticated than a camera that sort of takes light and just sort of mirrors what it sees it's actually transferring a visual image into like electrical signals which then the brain sees as an image. You know, you see everything actually upside down and the brain flips it the other way around. The whole body, the immune system, the heart, we're just a miracle. We're a big miracle. And the whole universe is a big miracle. I mean, why is the world round? It could have been square. It could have been, you know, there's asteroids that are going in many different shapes. So everything we see is an epic miracle. Everything. And that's very important to understand because if you want to understand what's going on, you have to first of all understand that it's a miracle. And once you understand that it's a miracle, it means that it's intentional. If a person doesn't think, so they look at the world, you know, it says Abraham, he uh, was a genius and he started to think. He said there has to be a, a master plan. There has to be somebody that puts this all together. You can't go to a palace and say there's no architect. It has to be an architect. It's not possible. So, so too, this world, everything's so intricate. And the more science we learn, the more intricate it gets. I mean, it's even gotten to the point where we now know we can't understand. For example, DNA. Each little piece of DNA, which is all over you, each piece, the DNA strand, if you opened it up, it's six feet long. You know what that means? Something invisible is six feet long. And it's the entire code of how to make you. If you took all the strands of your DNA, you would wrap around the world three times. Three times around the world. Imagine a plane going around the world. Take at least 24 hours at 600 miles per hour. Three times. That's how much information code is in you. And it makes DNA like this. You know, every second you're losing and you're gaining about a million to two million red blood cells. Every single second. So that means in this second, since I've spoken to you, I've gained at least 20 million new DNA cells. That's 20 million copies. If you just had to put the DNA into books, I believe it would be 5,000 books. Imagine something that within this short span of time, 20 seconds, whatever, 5,000, no, it's not just 5,000, 5,000 5, books times I don't know, even if you do it, one million. That's billions upon billions of books have been created this very second. Who did that? How did that happen? Now, you can say it's nature, but it's actually a miracle. We know for sure that we don't understand. It's impossible to understand how that occurs. I heard that from a student in the top university of DNA research. And the same thing goes with everything. We've discovered every, I mean, quantum physics, nobody can understand how do atoms pop in and out of existence? How do they go in, in, in different directions at the same time? It's, these are all miracles. So it's very important to, first of all, understand that everything is a miracle. So then the next question is, so what are we doing here? Why are we here? And the simple answer to that question is exactly like a parent. A parent gives birth to a child. Now, the child doesn't realize the effort that goes in. The, parent, the father has to go to work. The mother has to cook the food. Somebody's got to clean it. Nobody thinks, oh, wow, these things, somebody's putting in time and effort and love to me. You know, this is how it works. You have a father. He goes to work. You have a mother. She cleans. She cooks. It's just how the world functions. 
But really, it's all love. That's all it is. Nobody's doing that for some random kid. So that means that God sees in us, it says we are made in the image of God. God literally sees himself in us. We're his child. We have his potential. And therefore, number one, it's an act of tremendous, infinite love.